Good morning, brothers and sisters. I would like to welcome you all to our Sunday service. Next Sunday will be communion service, so prepare your heart and prepare communion elements on your own. <laughs> and our memory verse challenge already uh, reached 810. One of our college students, Makma Kochuiko, he memorized everything. So we're going to watch the video. Um, Magmag will memorize everything, but do not just watch him. Let us uh, try to memorize or recite all those verses together with him. A1, live the new life, Christ the center, 2 Corinthians 5.17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Christ the center, Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's Galatians 2.20. That's obedience to Christ, Romans 12.1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. It's Romans 12.1 Obedience to Christ John 14.21 Whoever has my commands and obeys them He is the one who loves me He who loves me will be loved by my Father And I too will love him and show myself to him John 14.21 The Word 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is God-breathed and it's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness 2 Timothy 3.16 The Word Joshua 1.8, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Joshua 1.8. Prayer, John 15.7, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. John 15.7. Prayer, Philippians 4.6-7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6-7 Fellowship, Matthew 18, 20 For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Matthew 18, 20 The last one, he, that is fellowship. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one, one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. That's Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. Thank you very much, Mark Mark, for challenging us this morning then our church is reminding you of daily quiet time. Do you have any problem of discipline or distractions or dryness? May God enrich your daily devotion. Today's Sunday School's topic is the Last Supper. Our kids will learn about our communion. And October is our church uh, mission month. So youth group this Friday going to have a special activity. And they will learn about the mission and different countries, their national flags. And since it's October mission month, we're going to have combined fellowship for all care group. So starting from October 8th, we will invite a missionary for Vietnam, Wendy So, then 15 film showing. 22nd, uh, each care group will have Zoom fellowship with different ministry partners. Then 29th, we will invite Kairos missionary Grace Gunanan. Then we are rejoicing with our baptismal candidates, six of them, Aris Ohena and Grace Udang, Charlene Vicente Habay, and Patricia Pebles Ferrer. They will be baptized this afternoon at 3.30 at church. Then this week, Oro Christian Gray School is celebrating uh, 36th anniversary week. 
all of you are invited to uh, Thanksgiving service tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, through Zoom. So Zoom ID, the meeting, meeting ID will be posted, already posted at, uh, in uh, our CGC Viber community. We will post it again for you. Let's watch a video. Thank God for wonderful ministry report from CEF, CDO. They should have uh, had uh, a credit saying this video is dedicated to Juliet Banales. I see, I, I've seen her in the video, and she was one of the leaders there who passed away a, a couple of weeks ago due to COVID-19. She, she, she had uh, been serving CEF for about uh, 39 years. And let us continue to give as an act of worship. Before we read our scripture verse, I would like to welcome and introduce our speaker, Reverend Bernard Hansen. Reverend Bernard Hansen is a, he's the national director of uh, EE Philippines. EE means uh, Evangelism Explosion. EE has been our ministry, precious ministry partner, and Reverend Hansen uh, has led EE wonderfully with his faithfulness, with his energy, and with his passion. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, uh, no, last year, he was admitted to hospital, and he was, he was in ICU for, uh, for several days due to COVID as well. But he came out and God healed him. He came out swinging and serving the Lord faithfully. And today he will give us wonderful exaltation. 
let us read the scripture verse together. Psalm 71, 14 to 18. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God I will come. I will remind them of your righteousness, yours alone. O oh God, from my, from my youth you have taught me, and I will still proclaim your wondrous deeds. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come before you knowing that you are with us, and you are our Heavenly Father, and our Good Shepherd, Lord. We commit our life, our hearts, to you. Bless us as we come before you, come together as a family, as a community, Lord. Lord, we also pray for our speaker, Reverend Hansen, through his message. People will hear your voice, and people will put um, more heart, more commitment to your work, and they will desire, strive to grow in you, Lord. So bless us with your message. Bless us uh, this exaltation. Lord, we thank you for OCGS. It's really tangible evidence of your presence, your blessing upon our church as a ministry, Lord. Pray that Lord, OCGS will continue to train our young people, our younger generations with your words and academic excellence as well. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your loving kindness, your healing, your protection upon our church members. Still, some people are still suffering, fighting COVID-19 and different diseases and different illness, Lord. We pray that you will lay your hands upon them, release your power, and heal them, and give them peace, and give them reason and purpose of life, Lord. Lord, we thank you, and we commit our worship service into your hands. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. In the quiet, in the still.
Good morning. It's a joy for me to be able to join you, though not physically, during this worship this Sunday morning. Our text this morning is taken from Joshua chapter 24, verse 15, and from the New American Standard Bible. I read, If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our text is Joshua's final address to the people of Israel. Forty years have passed after the Israelites were freed from the bondage of slavery in the land of Egypt. Of course, these were very exciting times for the people. Why not? The enemies were defeated and the promised land was claimed and each of the tribe had received their inheritance and now they could settle down and enjoy life a little. It was also a time of hope, prosperity, and blessings. Yet, it was also a very dangerous time for the people. Three dangers before them were, number one, they may forget where they came from, how they have gotten to where they were, and what the Lord had done for them. Number two, there was also the danger that they would adopt the idolatrous religion of the Canaanites who still lived among them. And thirdly, the danger that they would fall into a state of complacency. Complacency is a state in which they might feel that they could just let down their guard just a little. Joshua stood to deliver a challenge from the Lord. The Lord wanted them to dedicate themselves to Him and to His work. Choose today. This choice involves examining oneself to see if he is in the faith and is trusting God to see if one is walking in the Spirit and in truth and if Jesus Christ is all in all. God wants wholehearted dedication or nothing. Take note, Joshua did not command submission to God or forcibly compel them. In fact, he provided an alternative of rejecting him to make a very decisive choice. We are free to choose. As a leader, Joshua exhorts but leaves the choice open. Why? Because in the ministry of God, liberty is essential to voluntary service. God would not value forced devotion. Choose. This means this, uh, this, is, this uh, a decision or we need to decide. Indecision is a fatal error. If you are driving in a free highway, for example, you need to make a split decision or within seconds if you're going to change lanes or to make a turn. Beloved, one principle that I learned is that the worth of one's devotion de depends on its free willingness. Take note, however, that the freedom that God accords us does not release us from obligation but only an exemption from compulsion. It is still our duty to serve God. Let's go to the main message of Joshua. Joshua reminded them of a few things. Number one, it was a time of remembrance. 
what was it for them to remember? Well, Joshua wanted them to remember God's power in their lives. That's it. Uh, found in verses 1 to 12. They are reminded about God's choice and call of Israel. How God redeemed them. And there were three very specific events that I'd like to share with you that showed God's power within the book of Joshua. The battle of Jericho, where the city walls collapsed. The battle of Gibeon, where huge hailstones fall from the sky and crush the enemy. And the sun stood still, so Israel had longer period of daytime to catch and kill as many of the enemy soldiers as possible before the night came. God knew that the only day Israel could move forward in faith was if its people remembered how his presence was with them. God had proven that he was with them the entire time. It is the same with us, beloved. Yours and my history with God is vital information for our future. Joshua also wanted them to remember God's presence in their lives. Again, verses 1 to 12. Joshua reminded that God has even been with them from the time God took Abraham from the region beyond the Euphrates River, led them throughout the land of Canaan, multiplied their descendants, to their conquest, conquest of the promised land. God gave them a land for which they did not labor, cities they did not build, or provisions from vineyards, and olive groves they did not plant. In everything they faced, He was there to help and to see them through. Technically, in our lives today, the moment one comes to the Lord Jesus Christ in acknowledgement of sin, in repentance, and transferring of our life and our faith in Jesus Christ alone, we have never been alone in this life. I have traveled so many places, so many countries, and one of the common questions asked of me in my years of traveling was, who is with you? I only have one answer most of the time. I am traveling with Jesus. Jesus is with me. The third thing that Joshua wanted them to remember was God's provision in their lives. They are reminded how they enjoy blessings that they do not deserve. The land, the city, the fruits of the vineyard. Oh, remember the daily manna that they received. Beloved, everything we have and own comes from the good hands of the Lord of faithful provision. Have you found time to count them one by one? I wish we have enough time to count God's blessings today. We are blessed. The second thing, that uh, main thing that uh, Joshua uh, brought the attention of the Israelites would be that it is a time of confrontation, verses 14 and 15. What are they confronted with? They were confronted by a command, and there, there, there was a threefold command. Number one, they had to fear the Lord, honor and reverence Him for who He is. Fear in the scripture means reverential fear. In the life of Apostle Paul, 
when he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that he began to fear the Lord, it resulted something in his life that now he began bringing people at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fear, again, is reverential fear. Secondly, the second command is you need to put away all other gods in your life. The, these are the things in our lives that come ahead of the Lord and takes away the place of God in our lives. You see, anything that comes in between our relationship between God and us is a little God in that life. Remember, God will not share His glory with another. God said, You shall have no other gods before me. Beloved, what are the idols in our lives that takes away our devotion, our commitment from the Lord? Remember King Hezekiah <clears throat> of the Old Testament? King Hezekiah was actually affirmed in the Bible as one who did what was right in the Lord's sight. 2 Kings chapter 18 verse 3. Verse 3 tells us that he removed the high places and broke the pillars, pillars and cut down the Asherah. And he broke down into pieces the bronze serpent because people were beginning to worship it. Tools for transformation can become objects of worship. In our sinfulness, we can make an idol of just anything. Things that are important to us. I remember one time, I was about to speak in a church, Filipino church in Italy. And one lady approached me and said, Pastor Bernard, may I be the one to have the privilege of carrying your Bible and your note notebook. I said, no, it's okay, it's very light. And she said, no, I want special anointing just by holding your Bible. And I said, oh, uh, parang iba dito. And uh, I remember during the visit of one of the popes, oh, they, they, they kept the, the mom that he used for coffee because they said this must have power, something like that. Now we must constantly point people to the person of Jesus Christ. Only He is worthy of our worship. When we help people see the power and the greatness of Jesus, idols look less attractive. And then thirdly, they need to serve the Lord with sincerity. To serve means to fulfill the role of slave. The word sincerity means wholeheartedly, completely with integrity. The English word sincere comes from two Latin words, which means without wax. It was used to refer to scrupulous pottery dealers who sold first-class pottery that did not have cracks, pots with wax. You see, when pots pottery was held up against the light, the wax pots was easy to spot. Beloved, so it is with people who, since, who live sincere lives. When they are held up against the light, their hypocrisy shows. And God does not want His people to live lives of hypocrisy. He wants us to be what we claim to be. And Joshua challenged them to choose who they would serve. For many hundreds of years of slavery of Egypt, God was teaching Joshua's generation to rest and to renew their commitment to Him. He instituted the Sabbath so that the Israelites regular, regularly pause 
from their strivings and recalibrate their spiritual compasses. That's why they were asked to make a choice who to serve, their toiling or the God who gives rest and restoration. The people of Israel had to make a decision to serve. There could be no neutrality. If they served the Lord, they would have to get rid of the false gods that some of them are secretly worshipping. Are there secret gods in our lives? Joshua was not suggesting that the people could choose to worship the false god of the land and God would accept it for there were no other option but to serve God. Joshua knew that everybody must worship something or someone because humanity is incurably religious. The point was they could not serve other gods and the true God. And then lastly, it was also a time of consecration. Choose today. It is a day. It is a time of consecration. Verses 16 and 18. After Joshua set the example and laid down his and his family's resolve by saying that as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Well, it was designed to encourage everyone to make the right choice. And in our society today, we need people who will settle in their hearts that Jesus Christ and His Word are going to come before anything else in our lives. You remember the story of Daniel? In Daniel chapter 1, specifically verse 8, it said, Daniel purposed. Daniel resolved in his heart not to defile himself by not eating the king's food. Beloved, like Daniel, you're going to choose today and what will also be your result today. If you are engaged with someone or you've been married isn't it wonderful that we regularly recommit ourselves to the person that we love? And this is what is being asked of us this morning. We recommit. We affirm and reaffirm that we only have Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. Now the people have come to resolve and declare their allegiance to him alone. And Joshua took the opportunity to remind them that God is holy and righteous. If they serve him, and this is the same promise with us today, if we serve him, he will bless them, he will bless us. But if they renege on their end of the agreement, there will be a high price to pay. Let us remember that God's holiness demands total obedience. He will not tolerate sin in the lives of His children. The people reacted by settling about the business of serving the Lord. You know what they did? They set up a memorial or a record of their decision. And what was that for? To hold them accountable. Suddenly, Israel did not keep their vows to the Lord. And they paid a terribly high price. And we, found, we find this in the book of Judges, Samuel, the Kings, and Chronicles. Beloved, we cannot serve God without voluntarily choosing Him for our Master. We became Christians not by accident or by the unconscious influence of a Christian atmosphere. God provided the way. As I close, has there been a time where you really consciously made a decision for the Lord? 
Don't you think it is time to make up your mind? Not tomorrow, but today. If the Lord be God, then serve Him. If He is not, then go ahead and serve whatever you have in your heart. What does the choice of the Lord mean to us today again? It means the abandonment of ourselves, our personal rights, our cherished interests, and our self-will. For His plans, His rights, His interests, and His will. That means we swim against the tide of popular opinion as our heart focuses and refocuses on Christ and steadily look up upon Him. Beloved, choosing the Lord is the most important decision of the will that you and I must make today. May God bless you. Father, thank you for your word today. I pray it has spoken to the hearts of your people and that today they are also making the very important decision to choose you above all else. In Jesus' name, Amen.
May the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, unfailing love of God the Father, and the fellowship and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our worship service will continue in our daily lives. Choose God and serve Him. Thank you.